If you've followed my videos for a while, you know that I use my router table on almost every furniture project I work on here in my shop. I think the router table is one of the most useful tools in a woodworking shop, and it can be used for everything from cutting joinery to adding edge profiles to even making your own molding. My previous router table was never really set up with proper storage, and it had a fairly underpowered router installed in it that was kind of starting to act up. So I felt like it was time to get a fresh start with a new super beefy router table with some really cool features built into it. Rather than use the kind of standard leg kit that comes with most router tables, I chose to instead just build my own cabinet for the base. And I figured this would make fitting drawers and doors simpler and I could also get more usable storage space out of the same footprint. Up to this point, you've seen me breaking down some pieces of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood, which is what I use for the cabinet. And the next step was drilling a bunch of pocket holes, which I used for the joinery on this cabinet. I used my behemoth of a pocket hole machine here since it's set up for 3 quarter inch plywood, but a standard pocket hole jig would have worked just as well, of course, just a little bit slower. After getting the pocket holes drilled, I could get the cabinet assembled, starting by attaching the side panels to the bottom. I used the center divider to space the side panels and clamped everything together really well before driving in the screws. And it's super important to clamp your parts well when using pocket screws, as otherwise they'll have the tendency to push the parts out of alignment when driving in the screws. Next, I flipped the cabinet over and repeated the same process to add the center divider, using the two vertical dividers to set the position of that center divider. And referencing the parts like this not only made for a super quick cabinet assembly, but it also ensured that my cabinet would come together perfectly, even if some of my parts were a little over or undersized. I continued the assembly process by adding the vertical dividers, which will create the kind of center area for the Rockler dust bucket, which will provide the dust collection for this router table. And then I could finish the cabinet assembly with the two smaller top pieces. Before moving on, I confirmed the fit on the router tabletop, just making sure the cabinet fit around the dust bucket. And then I could add a few stretchers to finish off the cabinet structure. Next, I cut the pieces for the drawers, which I made from half-inch Baltic birch plywood over the table saw. And I made sure to cut the pieces in a way that referenced the factory edges of the pieces initially, but I made sure to cut off that factory edge on the last cuts so that I was left with super clean edges on the parts. To assemble the drawers, I first added a bead of glue around the perimeter of the drawer bottom, which I also cut from half-inch plywood so that the drawer was nice and sturdy, and then I tacked the sides together with my Aero PT18G brad nailer. And I referenced the drawer bottom when assembling the drawer sides, and as long as they lined up, the drawer box would end up square. Finally, I flipped the drawer over and added more brad nails to hold the bottom panel in place while that glue dried. Before the glue had a chance to totally set up, I used the straw trick to remove any squeeze out from the inside corners of the drawer box, running the straw along that inside corner. The last step in the drawer box construction was to reinforce the corners with a few screws, since I didn't add any glue there, and I used inch and a half self-drilling screws, which have become a favorite of mine when working with plywood. With that, the drawer box was finished, and I personally think this is the quickest and easiest method for assembling drawers, and it's kind of my go-to for shop projects. Next, I could work on the vertical slide outs that will go in the areas to the left and right of the dust bucket, and I started with a router bit storage slide out. I first taped the two layers of the slide out together with some painter's tape, and then marked out locations for holes for these router bit storage inserts. And these inserts allow you to store either quarter inch or half inch shank router bits in them, and they just friction fit into a 5 8 inch hole. I drilled the holes using a Forstner bit over at the drill press, and man, do I need to figure out some kind of dust collection solution for the drill press, which allows me to have both hands free. Anyway, after drilling the holes, I could get the first slide out assembled, and I decided to make good use of the off cuts from the drawers and just use two strips of plywood at each end of the slide outs. And this ended up being plenty strong, and assembly was super easy using more glue and brad nails. I also used a little spacer just to ensure the spacing was even on both ends of the slide out. Finally, I added one screw at each joint just for a little bit more reinforcement. The other slide out was assembled in exactly the same way, except I decided to make these more of a slide out tray for storing things like wrenches and other frequently used accessories. To keep these accessories from falling off the trays, I cut a few strips of quarter inch plywood and then tacked them in place using my Aero PT23G pin nailer. 
and pin nails were really perfect for this kind of application as they provided plenty of holding power, keeping the sides in place while the few dabs of CA glue I added dried. Next, I could get the drawer slides installed in the cabinet, and I used the same spacer method I've been using recently to help with this. And these are overextension slides, which I really like to use on shop projects so that I can access everything in the drawer really easily. And I think these black slides look particularly nice. I installed the drawers using more spacers, using pieces of quarter inch plywood below the bottom drawer. And I slid the drawer out partially, added a few screws, then finally removed the drawer entirely to add the last screw at the back of the drawer. With that, the bottom drawer was in, and I just repeated the same process using the same spacer to install the upper drawer. The vertical slide outs were a little bit different since the slides attached to the top and bottom of the slide outs, but the process of installing the slides themselves was really the same. I just installed the slide outs with the cabinet on its side initially, and they still worked great even when flipped back into the vertical orientation. And you can see how the router bit storage slide out works here, and I think this spacing actually worked out perfectly, even for the largest router bit I own. Before adding the drawer fronts, I went ahead and sanded down all of the drawers, breaking all of the sharp edges, and the last thing I want is to catch a knuckle on a sharp edge when grabbing something out of one of these drawers. I repeated the same process on the cabinet, sanding all of the edges and breaking any sharp edges. I also went ahead and added a chamfer to all the drawer fronts and door, and I also added a heavy chamfer to the bottom edge of the drawer boxes, which just give them a nicer finished look. Anyway, with the chamfering done, I could go ahead and get the drawer fronts installed. I used the playing card trick to get even spacing around the edges of the drawer fronts, and once they were spaced evenly, I used my Aero hot glue gun to temporarily hold the drawer fronts in place. Finally, I drilled countersunk holes and added screws from the inside of the drawers to permanently hold the drawer fronts in place. I repeated the process for the rest of the drawers, and then I could get the door, which closes up the area with the dust bucket in it, installed. I used Euro hinges, which I'm a huge fan of, and used a jig to drill the holes, which makes this process super simple. When I went to install the door, I realized that I only had one inset hinge on hand since I had used three hinges on a previous project, but I did have a few sets of full overlay hinges lying around. After some trial and error and consulting my buddy Mike Farrington, the cabinet wizard, I figured out that you can use a full overlay hinge as an inset hinge by simply adding a three quarter inch spacer between the hinge and the inside face of the cabinet. And this is a pretty cool tip and is definitely good to know for future projects in case I have the wrong type of hinge on hand. Now you might have noticed that I haven't shown any kind of drawer or door pull up until this point, and that's because I decided to use these Bloom tip-on units, which are little push-to-open hardware pieces. And in retrospect, I would have just purchased push-to-open drawer slides and only used these on the door, as these only work with self-closing hinges and slides, but I figured I'd show the process of installing them anyway. I first whipped up a little drilling jig based on the Bloom instructions using a scrap piece of plywood, and then I used a self-centering drill bit in tandem with the jig to drill the mounting holes on the inside of the cabinet. To mount the tip-on units, I first mounted the plastic mounting plate to the inside of the cabinet, and then clipped the push-to-open mechanism onto the plate. And this tip-on unit has some built-in adjustability, and by screwing in or out the plunger, the final position of the door or drawer is adjusted in or out. Unfortunately, my jig was a little bit off, so I needed to rework it a bit, but once I did, the units were really easy to mount and get adjusted. And as you can see, once it's positioned correctly, you just push on the door and the tip-on unit pushes the door open about an inch and a half, giving you plenty of room to open the door. As I mentioned, this worked great on the door, but it was a lot more fiddly on the drawers and slide outs, as I needed to use two of the tip-on units per drawer to provide enough force to push the drawer open. I also had to dado out an area on the side of the drawers to provide clearance for the tip-on units, since I didn't really have a good spot to mount the units that would clear the drawers with this inset cabinetry. Eventually, after a lot of trial and error, I got them all working, but again, I'd probably just go with push to open slides in the future. Next, since the cabinet was getting pretty darn heavy at this point, I decided to go ahead and mount these Rockler Total Lock casters, which lock not only the wheel itself, but also the spinning mechanism, which makes for a super secure base. 
With the cabinet pretty much finished, it was finally time to get it mounted to the cast iron router table top. And this top already had tapped holes for mounting a base to it, so I marked out matching locations on the top of the cabinet and then drilled a small locating hole to transfer that location to the inside of the cabinet. I first drilled a large recessed hole so that I could use a large washer to spread the holding power of the mounting bolts, and then I drilled a slightly oversized through hole for the mounting bolts themselves. After drilling the four holes for the mounting bolts, I made sure everything would come together nicely by test fitting the base on the top, and luckily everything lined up pretty much perfectly. The last thing to do before attaching the top to the base was routing out a clearance area for the dust bucket mounting wings, which are how the dust bucket is mounted to the underside of the cast iron top. I had marked out these locations when test fitting the bolts, and I extended the lines using a combination square, giving myself plenty of wiggle room. And since these areas didn't really need to be perfect and would never be seen, I just routed them freehand, and I also made sure to first remove the pocket screws from these areas before routing so I didn't destroy my router bit. After routing, I re-added those screws, this time adding them to the inside wall of the cabinet rather than through the pocket holes since they would have interfered. I got the dust bucket mounted to the underside of the tabletop using the included bolts, and then I could finally get the cabinet added to the underside of the top, or so I thought. Dang screws. I guess I just need to go deeper because of the stupid yeah. mounting bolts. Unfortunately, I hadn't accounted for those mounting bolts when cutting the clearance areas, so I had to repeat the process again off camera and route those areas a little bit deeper before finally lifting the cabinet into place for the final time and getting the mounting bolts added. With everything installed on the router table, I decided to go back and add the back panel as well, which really helps the cabinet resist racking forces over time. I got the back panel cut out at the bandsaw, added glue to the back edges of the cabinet, and tacked the panel in place with more brad nails. Finally, with the help of my buddy Eddie, I got the router table flipped over, and we could admire this gorgeous cast iron router table top from Rockler. After cleaning off the packing grease, I added a little bow shield T9 just to prevent the top from rusting, and then I could get the router lift installed. First, I added the leveling set screws from the underside of the top and got them all set to pretty much the same height before dropping in the router lift. I continued adjusting the set screws until the lift was perfectly flush with the tabletop, and once they were all adjusted, I locked them in place with the lock nut and dropped the lift into the top to admire my work. <laughs> that said, the lift didn't stay in for long because I of course needed to get my router installed. And I went with this beast of a Porter cable router which is a massive upgrade from my previous router table router. And one bonus is this Rockler Pro Lift accepts this Porter cable unit with no additional adapters, so it was super easy to just drop it in and get it secured. With the router in, I could get the lift reinstalled and try it out, and this thing works great. The plates can be removed and reinstalled easily with no special tool required like my previous router lift, and the height adjustment is super smooth with the crank arm. Next, I added the fence to the table, which attaches through the built-in track in the top, and then I could attach a two and a half inch hose between the dust bucket and the fence. And I really like this dust bucket system. I had it on my old router table as well. And you just connect one four inch hose to it and it'll automatically split the airflow between the fence and the inner area of the dust bucket. Before getting too much further, I decided to go ahead and add a quick clear coat to the router table cabinet just to help keep it looking nice. And I went with what is becoming one of my go-to clear finishes, Total Boats Halcyon Clear. I used it on the butcher block countertop I built for my home bar about a year ago, and after a year of service, it's showing pretty much no signs of wear, which is pretty awesome considering all the cocktails that have gone across that bar top. Once the finish dried, I got the drawers and doors reinstalled, and then I could start getting the router table ready for its maiden use. First, I mounted a paddle switch with a big emergency stop, which makes turning the router on and off super easy. I also did a little cable management to make things look tidy while I was at it. I also went ahead and loaded up the slide out tray with the height adjustment handle and the collet wrenches and then I could get a bit installed and finally try this router table out. Changing bits is super easy with the combination of this router lift and these offset wrenches and I decided to start things off with one of my most used bits, my ever trusty chamfer bit. I got the fence aligned with the bearing on the bit using a combination square, adjusted the opening so that it would provide the most focused dust collection airflow around the bit and then ran a test board across. 
and I was left with zero dust and the cut was super clean and this router table is definitely going to be a huge upgrade for me. Next, I swapped over to a big spiral flush trim bit to do some flush trimming, and I decided to test out these really cool corner radius templates here. So the dust collection wasn't as good initially, but that's because I had the fence too far from the bit, but once I corrected that, the dust collection was spot on. Finally, I threw in a big round over bit and ran it on the same test piece, and this allowed me to try out the micro height adjustment feature on the router lift, which made dialing in the height of the round over super easy. And the first pass was too high, as you can see by the fuzzy bits left, so I lowered the bit just a hair and was left with a perfect round over. With that, this router table was really finished, but I had one more accessory that arrived just as I was finishing this build that I just had to go ahead and get installed. This unfortunately required the slightly scary task of drilling and tapping four holes into my shiny new router tabletop, but luckily this went extremely smoothly with no broken taps and I could get the new accessory installed. So this is a power feeder for those of you who might not be familiar with this tool, and it does exactly what the name implies. It feeds material with power, in this case, a small motor. And the setup was really pretty quick and easy, and now I really just need to set the height for whatever material I'm using now that everything else is positioned correctly. And as you can see, it makes things like adding a roundover on longer pieces a breeze. And this will be super useful anytime I need to add an edge profile to a lot of boards in the future, especially if those boards are particularly heavy or long. And the power feeder swings out of the way easily when I'm not using it. Pretty cool. With that, besides getting some bits loaded up and the drawers organized, I could call this router table project complete. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. I am super happy with the way this router table came together. It's gonna be a big, big improvement in my shop. Also, I wanna give a big shout out to my YouTube members. I have not been giving you guys enough love here lately, so I'm gonna be having this list of names scroll by of my YouTube members at the end of each of these videos, just as a big thank you for you guys for supporting me. If any of y'all are interested in learning more about becoming a member of my channel, I'll have a link to that somewhere on the screen. And also, while you're here, why not go ahead and get subscribed and ring that notification notification bell so you don't miss my future videos. And last, check out this other video of mine that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. All right, thanks for watching y'all and until next week, happy building.